We are at a very interesting week. Uh, you, you've spent a lifetime in markets. You're a very successful uh, yeah, trader yourself. Um, the very important week, tomorrow we'll get the Fed's decision on interest rates. Everybody's, yes, everybody's uh, waiting with bated breath. The market seems to think they're not gonna do anything, but maybe they'll do something else. So my question to you is, should they, should they now raise interest rates? Is it time finally for them to raise interest rates after nine years or not? And, if, and, and, if, and, and will they? Yeah, I think um, in the absence of other things that would displace that on the headlines, and by the way, if anything did displace it in the headlines, it would probably be about us, so I'm not unhappy that we're, <laughs> we're all focused on, the inter on that, that interest rate decision. I'm not sure how consequential it is. I think everybody has visibility into everything. And if the decision gets made, it's not because there's a tsunami of evidence of a hardening and quickening recovery and tightening of labor and acceleration of, uh, uh, acceleration of inflation. Nobody thinks that. It's just almost a question of um, wanting to get over that hurdle. And on that basis, that's probably not a reason to do it. So I just don't think it's all that consequential. We'll look back and people will say it was really consequential whether it was September or December at the margin, 25 basis, po you know, 25 basis points or zero. Is that going to be so consequential? Probably not. But if, I were <clears throat> but if I had that job and I would like to think that they did this, the idea that I'm tired of rates at zero, um, G you know, this kind of soft, let's get it over with kind of stuff, should really uh, give way to the hard data evaluation. And the data evaluation isn't compelling an interest rate, rate rise at this point. So I'm not saying it's so meaningful um, and so consequential because I don't really think it's that dramatic on one way or another because it's not as if they, have, that they, if they do it, they'll say, my gosh, what do they see that we don't see? I think we're all seeing the same things. Uh, and it's not that big a, di that, that big a difference. So I wouldn't do it unless I was compelled to do it because I'd want to have blinders on because once you get, you know, once you get pulled by, gosh, they've been low too long and gosh, you know, these kind of soft things, it really enters into, you know, the pressure and the politics and I think they should be, I think it should be data driven if you're the Fed. And you don't think the data's there right now to justify a rate increase? It doesn't seem to be. But this seems, always seems to be the problem we seem to be in. For the last few years, you know, the Fed has had this extraordinary accommodative monetary policy for a long time now. Whenever it looks like they're going to back away from it, we had the taper tantrum two years ago. We've had now, as we, as we come towards what looks like a rate increase, the market, it seems to send the markets into a, into a funk. And everybody says, oh, well, the Fed can't do anything now because the markets are in a funk and, you know, we have to keep putting it off. I, isn't there a case for just saying, look, the Fed should just remove the uncertainty You've got to get out of this extraordinary position at some point because at some point we're going to have another recession, by the way, and you're going to want a bit of, you're going to at least want some room for Well, maneuver. I wouldn't trade uncertainty for the more consequential and adverse risk. You know, look, it's the, the risk and the, conse the consequences of, um, of going too soon and hurting the recovery is vastly disproportionate to the consequences of taking a little bit more incremental for inflation risk. There's a playbook for dealing with inflation. There's no playbook for dealing with deflation, especially now when you don't really, you don't have a lot of, you know, you don't have a lot of tools. You know, and I would say that the Fed has, in a lot of ways, have tightened. You know, we're living, you know, we've gone through, um, you know, over the last couple of years, income tax rises, um, you know, which is deflationary. The, the, um, the abandonment of QE, all of those were kind of defla you know, were kind of deflationary steps. You know, we didn't necessarily balance the budget, but we set our, you know, we set the um, the, 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 the the revenue and the the, uh, the revenue and the expenses on a path to narrowing. That's a deflationary corrective step <clears throat> that people wanted to see that we have seen. You know, we have a lot of accomplishments under that belt. Compare that to uh, compare that to Europe where the lines continue to diverge. And so we've worked our way through those things. I mean, gosh, if we wanted a deficit spend again, uh, if you could, assuming you could legislate, we could be in a position to do that because we're in a, we're in a path of convergence on the deficit. So um, we've done a lot already. I don't think you have to make this incremental step to prove your bona fides or just because there's ennui with the current pattern. But the Fed raised rates, uh, where, where would, you've, again, you've been, you've been seeing these market situations for a long, over By the long way, they may well time. raise rates at 25 basis, but I just don't think, don't think it's, it's that, have a big, you, I just what, don't think it's worth the ink. If they did raise basis points, to, uh, by 25 basis points, you don't think that would have a big effect this well, week? Well, they'll raise it by 25 basis points, and for sure, they'll remind everyone about how 
how gradual they'd expect the trajectory to be, and it's going to be like this for a long time. So what's, re what's really the difference, and everybody would be speculating. Actually, all those promises and commitments will give way to any change that we have in the data.